Timothy, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? It's weird that we're starting this conversation now after literally just having like a five minute conversation. Before. <laughs> I, I, I always like to start formally. Um, yeah, of course. Where I want to start the interview is with a line from Tyler, I think. Um, I was 16 laying in my bunk bed dreaming of riches. Uh, what did those dreams look like? Oh, man. Do you know what? I think at that age, yeah, I was like, when I, because obviously when I was living at my mum's house, me and my brother used to share a room. So we had to have mm. bunk beds and stuff. And like, I think I was kind of maybe like dreaming of something bigger than like sharing a room with my brother and like you know like we're like there was a it was me my sister my brother and my mum in the house and it was kind of like a small a relatively small house and like kind of like oh yeah I'm just dreaming of maybe one day being able to have I don't know just do anything that was just kind of like big you know I didn't I didn't really care what it was and luckily I kind of like fell into music and it and it kind of like worked out but yeah that um yeah dreaming of the riches I guess I guess this. I, I guess I, all my guitars here and there's some there and my football shirts and stuff. Yeah, it's just like, I guess everything kind of worked out in the end. It's very strange. When did music come into it then? Because I did uh, read somewhere, I don't, or maybe it was in a different interview you did, where it was also born kind of out of boredom as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, I, I tell this story to everyone. I, I'm sorry if it if it goes no, no, on for like, so long. But so uh, basically came out of a uh, sixth form and I'd like fucked all my exams up. Like I'd like, I, I wasn't very good at like revising. So I was kind of like, I was like, I knew I was going to fail them. And um, everyone was like going to uni all the summer. We spent all the summer together with my friends and like everyone started off going to university. And then uh, I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm not going to get a job. I'm going to start making music instead. Made like these, this like first bunch of demos, said it to my friends. And I was like, what do you think of this? Should I put it out? And they were like, they were like, no, no, they're like, no, 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 you, you get a job. You should get a job. And then, and we were listening back to them the other day and they sound awful. They sound horrible. Yeah. And, um, so, what were so they like? Got... So, sorry to interrupt. What, what oh. were they like? Can you kind of paint the picture? So imagine. Yeah. So I, so like I was still using the, my iPhone to like record mm. vocals and stuff. Yeah. Um, so imagine going on garage band and like, the garage band on iPhone, when you go to, I don't know if it's the same anymore, but like um, on the phone, it wouldn't have like, it wouldn't have like real effect names. So it wouldn't mm. be like, I don't know, like chorus or like distortion. It'd be called like alien or <laughs> robot or something right, like that. So right. imagine all these effects ch ch like chucked onto <laughs> this one vocal. That's how it sounded. And it sounded awful. And we were listening back to it the other day and it was like, like and as well as chucking tons of auto tune on it, like the auto tune is like you don't even put it in a key; it just tries to find you a key, and it'll just mm. and like so, or every single effect you could find on that on that Garage Band on my phone was just chucked on there because I didn't want it to sound like me because I was so embarrassed as well mm. of like oh like what if people don't like it and then yeah so then uh showed them they were like yeah now nah, you should like get a job so I worked at Foot Locker for like uh maybe like a year and then i was like i was like you know i'm gonna try this music thing i'm gonna change the name and i'm gonna um i'm gonna not sh not show anyone what i'm making and kind of like really on my days off i'm gonna really take some time to like mm -hmm. put some effort into this so i started making stuff i could hear it was getting better but i had no other ears telling me that so i kind of was going off like okay i believe this is gonna sound good and then I think of 2018 in October, I put out my first song and with a bit of, um, wait, was it my, I put out, sorry, I put out a song that I put money behind to get mm. it promoted and stuff. Um, and I remember I woke up and had like a thousand plays and I was like, I was like, whoa, but I was obviously still working at Fullocker at this time. And then did the same thing every week. I, I, do, I do like a Wednesday and I, then I put a song out on, on a Sunday and then maybe a Wednesday again, and then a Sunday, and then maybe I miss the Wednesday and just do the Sunday. And then over time, I think I put out maybe like like eight or nine songs or mm. whatever. And then uh, I put out that song, Tyler, in 2019 in January. And I woke up and I was just doing the same old promo stuff that I was doing before. And I woke up. And it had like 50,000 streams. And I was like, I was like, hang on, 
wait, what's going on? So uh, then, then I was kind of like, well, if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. So I just did the same old stuff again. I was still doing Wednesdays and Sundays, and and then I just then maybe I just started doing Sundays because then I got promoted in my job. Um, and yeah, and then then a couple of months after that, uh, I got a call from from Empire, and they were like oh yeah like we love what you're doing like do you want to kind of join and i was like oh hell yeah and then the first single we put out on <laughs> on the label was fucking rather do which mm. just went which just skyrocketed which i was so confused about because i was so in my own head as well as well about um i was like oh my god what if like what if the label don't like me what if like it's suddenly like i've joined the label everything changes and like all this shit and i was like sorry i don't know if i'm allowed to swear or not um yeah yeah, yeah you're but, fine yeah but i was like oh what if like what if everything goes really really bad and um yeah but then luckily that happened and and ever since then we've just kind of been putting out the songs pretty cool but I, I think it's really cool that you didn't get discouraged by that first kind of attempt and, and kind of disappointment uh-huh. that arose out of that and then <laughs> it, it's it's almost like uh, a confirmation or that that perseverance uh pays off so so what was that in you that you that you kind of felt like no i, I need to try again and, and see how how i can what what was I the think, urge or the the need to to put something out? So I think it really was like you were saying before, like it kind of. I think it was just boredom. I think I was mm-hmm. really bored. I've re- really fed up of like of of the job that I was doing, and yeah, I think I I think I was going in to work, and I'd start at like I'd wake up at like six and then leave at like seven, get there for like half seven eight. And then like leave at like five or six. And it was kind of like, I was just doing that every single day. Like the amount of people that come in and kind of like be complaining or like you, mm. you'd come in and people would just be really difficult. And I was kind of like, I was like, this is just not really fun at all. And um, yeah, then I, uh, I was like really going through like really a really bad mental health like point as well. Like that was really, really like, I was really low and like my friends mm. could tell and they were like, you're right. And I was like, I'm not really. And, and then I'd like was doing this music stuff and it was kind of like, I had something else to like focus on that I was really enjoying and I could do my foot like a job. And, and, and then eventually that kind of just turned into a way of getting money so I could fund this other thing, sure. not even knowing that I could, like, I wasn't even making money off the music thing. I just loved seeing like the numbers and shit and like, and yeah, that's where it all kind of where it all kind of came from, and it was just kind of. And I don't even I don't even think I like made any money on like any of those first songs that like came out. Like I I don't think even think I think the first time like we actually started like making money was when stuff got started getting put on um Spotify, which was I think mm. almost a year after I put okay. out like like the first little bit of songs. Um, and I was doing it like as I still am, I was like doing it for the, the love of seeing what people think about it. And like, oh my God, like you like this. Oh my God. Oh, you hate this song. That's sick. Oh, why do you hate that song? Why have you said that nasty thing about me? Like, you know, it was like, <laughs> it was like, I don't know. It was, it was really, really fun and really interesting. It still is like, yeah, it was, I think it was just really boredom and just wanting to do something crazy, you know? But I, I think the, the time that, Things started to take off then uh, rather do was I'm guessing 2019 but it could have been 2020 I'm not sure uh yeah but it's around that time and then the, the whole world shuts shuts down and and oh. uh you're kind of you you're, it takes the wind out, out of your sails I guess so um, so what yeah. was that period because you did bring out quite a bit of music with uh, uh I don't suit hats yellow 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 the digikit uh, one and two so so there there was a lot of music that you were making, but it was all kind of numbers on the screen. So so once that was over, what was that transition like going from somebody who's kind of making music uh, on the internet in a way to <laughs> well, there's, I, these numbers are actual people. Oh, it was. Do you know what it was? It was actually scary more than anything because obviously, mm-hmm. like you see, like all these numbers on the screen, and like it doesn't really like calculate to that they're people or like that's how many times people have listened to the song or whatever it's like again like i don't want to bring up Foot Locker again yet but like sure. it's like when you'd cash up for the end of the day and you'd be like say like christmas time we do like mm. 20 to 30k like a day i think or maybe a week coming with but like and you kind of like don't even register that that's 
real money you kind of go oh it's just a number on a screen because i don't i don't see that like it's you know it's, it's somewhere it's, but yeah so seeing those numbers and then kind of going oh actually we should probably do some shows maybe like let's see how that goes and i was really like skeptical because i was like i was like man nobody's gonna come like no one's gonna fuck mm. well who the fuck would want to see me that's boring like i i just do internet stuff yeah and um yeah i remember then we put like a card a little mini cardiff show that had, like maybe like a hundred tickets and it sold out in like i remember i we i posted on my story and i was like oh if you want to come like come and i think like 90 percent of the tickets sold now i did an instagram post just to kind of like see oh maybe there's like 10 10 tickets left like fuck it and they just went like they just went like that those 10 tickets just like went straight after the post went up and i was like oh okay then we did that first tour and that sold out as well and there was kind of like it's like what the what is going on like i'm so, I, mean, I was like so good it's like why the fuck does anyone want to come to see me like i still don't understand why i'm not that fucking good i'm not that good of a person my music's all right i mean yeah <laughs> but uh yeah i mean it's, it's 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 really cool though but yeah it was weird like going through that uh covid time I'm, I'm sure it was for you as well just like not really knowing what the fuck you do from there like what like what what it was so uncertain do? yeah the, the whole world shut down I, i'm doing this now on the, on the internet what it used, didn't used to be like that i, I kind uh-huh. of refused to do interviews online but now i have to <laughs> yeah uh, but it, it's been better than i expected because it's just so convenient but what uh, there's something in what you said that i find interesting because you mentioned kind of the, uh, working at Foot Locker and kind of feeling, okay, this isn't really fun and uh, this isn't necessarily what I would like to do. And now maybe maybe this is a stretch, but if, if we take Front Porch, the new album, then uh, there there is this sentiment of kind of trying to get out of of, of where, you, where you're living or trying to... <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know if I interpret it well, but it's, it's that Bruce Springsteen sentiment, right? To, to kind of... Yeah. Uh, kind of feel like there's some more out there to be explored is, is that yeah. fair to say yeah it's it's weird yeah because like yeah this album was is is uh it was kind of I, I was writing it about okay everything that i kind of ever really wanted has happened now and well not everything but like a lot of things that you know when we talk about the tyler reference like everything sure. that i wish that would have happened back when i was 19 writing that song about oh i was only 16 blah blah it's like and now i'm kind of like actually i've come to london and it is shittier and i fucking hate it and i can't wait to fucking leave and i'm like and now i'm kind of like i want to make my way back home with my friends and i want to like i want to show them everything that i've done and be like oh wow like look we're about to go on this glaive tour or oh we're about to do another tour maybe we're about to go tour on the u.s like I want to go back and show them now. But now obviously I've moved here to kind of like further myself in, in my mm. career. And I'm like, I'm like, do you know what? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I kind of want to go back home. So that's why I was writing this album was like, I, I, I want everything that I had back then, but that back then person would have wanted everything that I have right mm. now. So it's like, it's like very much like a, yeah, it's like a, I don't know. I wouldn't even. I don't even know how to explain that. Like, it's uh, is it is it kind of like a catch twenty two in a way that there's no, that yeah, there's no, there's never a winner. There's it's, yeah, it's, exactly. There's never yeah, there's never a uh, there's never even when you wish for your best dreams, there's still something that's like going wrong with it. If you listen to Tyler and you listen to Front Porch, you do hear the evolution, even though you still have your DIY kind of approach. Uh, you do hear the evolution in the in the music in in how you sing in in kind of the the textures uh, in the music. How have you experienced this evolution yourself? Music. Um, do you know what? Um, I still use I still use GarageBand on the uh, on the computer because um, it's just my favorite. Like it's what mm-hmm. I started on, and it's like probably eventually what I'll finish on. You know. Um, but yeah, I think I think I was when I was like wrote like Tyler. I was so like, I like wasn't confident at all in my voice. So everything, everything sounded like this, and, I, da, 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 and I, everything was so low and everything so deep. And I was just so like nervous about like singing. Let's say mm. that everything was almost a bit shelled. But then obviously, as like time went on, and I was like, oh, actually, I'm gonna try and find my voice. And I started like, 
I could reach higher notes and I could reach lower notes and I could make things harmonize and I could do this and that and this and that. And um, yeah, I think in terms of like vocals and stuff, I think I just am trying to like push myself to make something that sounds a bit different, but not so different that it's like, that you're like, oh my God, this is revolutionary. I don't want to be that revolutionary kid that's like, you know, like, oh my God, he changed the genre of <laughs> indie pop. It's like, that's not going to be me. But um, yeah, and then in terms of like Sonic, like, in it, like the beats and stuff, I think, yeah, like we used to use like a lot of 808s and like very heavy trap drums. But yeah, I, I think the thing I tell everyone is that, especially people who are like, oh, like we want the old style back. We want the old music back. And like, I get it, yeah. Because, like, if that song from 2019 made you feel a certain way mm. back in 2019, I get it. And you want that feeling of, like, nostalgia. You want that feeling of being back there, back, because you don't really appreciate it until it's gone. Um, but things I say is, like, the thing I say is, like, I if I was still writing the same songs I was doing back in 2019, people would be saying it's so stale, do something different, try something different. And, and it's like the way I explained it is, is if I worked at, imagine if like I worked at Foot Locker from then till now, I worked from being an 18 year old boy to being a 25 year old. I worked there for seven years. Like I think there'd be something in my head that would say, I re even if I go to a different shop and I did eventually go to a different shop is like, uh, I, you just want to switch up. You just want a little bit of a change yeah. sometimes, you know, it's like, I'm sure like you in like, maybe like five or 10 years from now, you'll be like, oh, actually maybe doing interviews, doing journalism, do that isn't really what I want to do as much anymore. Maybe I want to do like the back ends of stuff. Maybe I want to start emailing people. Oh, maybe I can reach out to artists. Oh, all these people I've met. Like, and it's like, that's not a bad thing. Like, that's not a bad thing. And you might have your boss going, oh, come back, do the old interviews, do the old interviews mm. you used to do. But you might be like, yeah, but like that was when I was... 37 or like and it's like i i'm not i just don't want to do that anymore there's a couple of songs that i still want to delve into i think the the there's a couple that stood out to me but leaving was one of them um what was the starting point for that song leaving um do you know what uh i think that so like yeah what is it um like pack a bag and it's, yeah it's kind of like i wanted to like like i was saying before about okay leaving everything behind and kind of like starting fresh new like imagine like uh i think i was very inspired by like breaking bad at the time as well which is obviously like walter white and stuff so like sure. yeah like at, at the end just spoilers for anyone although if you haven't watched it by now like this You're your own fault, fault. yeah john it's like uh, that's whatever but um obviously when he kind of leaves and like packs his bag and like just ditches everything out before and just start something brand new and like obviously in his situation he can't really like do much but like imagine just kind of like being like okay one day i'm just gonna pack my bag just and just vanish get a whole new phone number just go to a whole different country and just live my life as maybe as me or as someone else and kind of like not worry about it um and yeah i think that's like eventually what hopefully I'll, I'll be able to do you know but that yeah and then that was that was kind of like the inspiration behind the song i had i have that um thought every every couple of years i think uh, as well like i should just move to an island and uh -huh, honestly johnny I, don't, I, don't, I just don't have the balls yet it's it's uh, maybe maybe it'll come maybe maybe i'm yeah. too uh, reserved i don't know but we'll see <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it'll probably happen eventually. I, I'll, I'll join you. We'll just go somewhere <laughs> together, honestly. Yeah, all, all you need is a guitar or something, and, and I'll be Oh, fine. hell yeah. Hell um, yeah. The other one, uh, let's see where it is. Um, yeah, I think it's um, Nostalgia Calls uh, that I found quite interesting. Uh, there's this notion of how it used to be, and, and we've talked uh, so far about thinking back on uh, how things were and, and what you appreciated about them. Are, are you a very nostalgic person? And um, how does that kind of find its way into your music? I, I, do you know what? I think 
I don't know why I've always been very obsessed with like old things. Like I I, I don't know whether it's because like in our house we used to have like like loads of like old like like stuff. I don't I don't really. Was, we had like a bunch of like china plates and like we had a big like grandfather clock and like it just used to like it was right in our hallway like as you enter the door it used to take up so much fucking room because it was so big and like our house wasn't that big and like um yeah it's just like we had like old things i think i was very like interest interested in like where they came from and like why we have why do we have Mm. them or like you know whatever um and i guess like maybe it's something that I didn't really realize, but then obviously coming into like Foot Locker and, you know, eventually moving away from like school friends and like how people in school would dress. I was like, oh, I'm going to start dressing vintage now because like that's what everyone in Foot Locker or like size was wearing. It wasn't mm. like, oh, I'm going to wear skinny jeans because my mate is wearing them. It was like, oh, I'm going to wear like this shit because I think it looks cool. And then, yeah, like again, then looking into like, where that shirt came from oh that's from the 80s oh, that's from 97 oh, that's from 96 like oh what what happened at the super bowl in 96 blah blah it's like yeah and then i think i kind of carried over into music and like um yeah just like missing missing old things um missing people and it's just like it's natural you know it's a feeling that we all we all feel and i feel like yeah I think I feel like we can we can mask saying we miss something by saying it's nostalgic. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like it, like yeah. I feel like it's a it's a nicer term of saying I miss something that is gone. You just say oh that's so nostalgic. And I, I think the, the I think the reason is uh, people these days are so focused on the future. Like you have to build towards the future. And you have to so so it's almost they're almost afraid of looking back sometimes. I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I huh. Yeah. I mean to be fair, I yeah. I definitely am. Like, I am scared of whatever the fuck is about to happen because it's either going to go or it's going to go and I'm going to be like, whatever happens, we'll ride it and, you know, whatever. Yeah, you'll figure it out. Uh, One last (laughs) question then. Um, Because we kind of mentioned it. Do you feel like uh, leaving London now then? Or or is that uh, Uh... that on the horizon? It's, I mean, it's definitely on the horizon. Like, honestly, like, I think um, maybe maybe leaving, like, the centre. Because where, where we are is, like, we're in, like, a nice place. Um, mm. uh, but, yeah, maybe leaving, like, central London and kind of moving further out. So it's, like, say if I need to go to the office, mm. it's only, like, an hour train. Whereas, like instead of going back to Cardiff and it being like three hours to London and then I do go for a meeting for an hour and then have to get a train. <laughs> sure. I did that one time. I fucking drove from Cardiff to London one time. I woke up at, I had a meeting at like 11. And I woke up at six. And I was out of the house by seven. It took me three and a half hours to drive there. I was there for an hour and I drove back home. So I spent <laughs> seven hours in the car for, for a one hour meeting. I was like, fuck this that's why i was kind of that's why i was like yeah i should probably have ended up moving here at some point but yeah i think yeah i i you know what i was almost gonna say london's a lovely place but it's not for me but um i'd say yeah i'll probably move out maybe in the next couple of years I well, the, the the only reason I ask is it, it feels like you don't need London in order for your mu- music to to be successful. If that sounds, uh uh-huh. no, that's that's very that's one thing that like, especially do you know what? Do you know what we were talking about earlier about the um the bad things of um like you know doing TikTok industry, and all this yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, one of the good things about um well actually to be fair, one of the many good things that are about like TikTok and stuff is that you don't have to be in the hot like the hot spots of whatever country you're in these days yeah. to have a successful music career because again you can do tiktok stuff you can do uh like reels and stuff and you can have your music heard by everyone wherever whereas i think like maybe even like 10 years ago you had to probably be in london you probably had to be recording in the biggest studios with the biggest producers and the biggest engineers to be able to have your song played on the radio but these days like there is so much good music on the radio that 
is just picked up by TikTok or do you know what I mean? It's just like I don't know. That's one thing that I that I think is really sick about the industry is that people like who again like probably aren't maybe might not be from like a really rich family mm-hmm. might put a, might make a song and it might go viral and then that changes their whole life and and it's given them something that's like to look up to look forward to you know that's sure. that's fucking sick but then obviously you have fucking cunts in london whose fucking mum and dad have been giving them money going go on go into the studio go on write a song with this person this person you're fuck off like, mm, what do you yeah. fucking know about it's not even your song you you're singing like oh man fucks me off i, I hate oh. by the way uh thank you so much for taking this interview. Oh, thank you very much for giving me the time